their mouths agape. Walking into the church were the three boys, Tom first, Joe next, and then Huck. For a moment, nobody moved or spoke. Then, the church filled with a collective noise. Aunt Polly and Joe's mother rushed to the boys and held them tightly, tears streaming down their faces. Aunt Polly cried and laughed, saying, Oh, Tom, you're a bad boy, but I love you. The minister exclaimed, Oh, happy days. Sing, good people of St. Petersburg, sing and be happy. And everyone in the church joined in singing, smiling, and laughing. It turned out to be the happiest funeral St. Petersburg had ever seen. The weeks passed, and the judge arrived in St. Petersburg. On the day before Muff Potter's trial, Huck and Tom met in the street near Tom's house. Huck appeared unhappy. Tom reassured him, saying, Huck, you didn't tell anyone about. You know, did you? Huck responded, No, I didn't. But, Tom, what about Muff? People are saying he's the killer, and he's going to die. Huck expressed his fear, saying, But we can't tell anyone about Joe. I don't want to die too. Do you? Tom didn't want to die either, but he couldn't forget. Muff Potter's face in jail, old, tired, and unhappy. And Joe, on the other hand, was a free man, which didn't seem right. That night, Tom came home late, bursting with excitement. He couldn't sleep for two or three hours. The next morning, the entire village gathered for Muff Potter's trial, including Joe. Muff waited as a tired old man with a dirty face. The judge began the trial with a flurry of questions and answers. But all the answers seemed to work against Muff Potter. There were statements like, Yes, I found the knife in the graveyard, next to Dr. Robinson's body. Yes, that's Muff Potter's knife. He always carries it, and yes, I saw Muff Potter. In the village that afternoon, he had the knife with him. Muff Potter's expression grew increasingly despondent. Then, the judge called for Thomas Sawyer and St. Petersburg. Perked up, wondering what young Tom Sawyer knew about the matter, the judge inquired, where were you on the 17th of June? At the hour of midnight, in the graveyard, Tom replied, I went there to see ghosts with a dead cat. This response led to laughter in the courtroom. While the judge looked visibly displeased, he continued, And where were you in the graveyard, Thomas? Tom explained, Behind the trees near Hoss Williams' grave, which caused Joe's face to turn white. The judge instructed Tom, Now, my boy, tell us your story. So Tom began to recount the events, and the people of St. Petersburg sat and listened with open mouths. He narrated the story, explaining how Muff Potter fell and Joe leapt out of the window, escaping swiftly. For a week, St. Petersburg adored Tom for his bravery, but Tom was not entirely happy because Joe remained a free man, and a potential danger, Tom struggled to sleep for weeks, and as the slow summer days passed, Joe never returned to St. Petersburg, fading from Tom's thoughts. The story takes a new turn as Tom's fascination with treasure leads him to seek out Huck for a treasure-hunting adventure. Huck was eager, and they decided to search for treasure under an old dead tree. As Tom believed that robbers typically buried their loot under such trees, and sometimes forgot about it, 
They headed to a dead tree on Cardiff Hill, three miles away from town, where they started digging. However, despite their efforts, they didn't find any treasure. While resting, Tom noticed an old, abandoned house at the foot of the hill. Tom proposed, let's go there, old houses are always good for treasure. Huck, however, was more cautious, remarking, good for ghosts, too. Bringing their pick and shovel with them, they descended the hill and entered the old house. The boys explored all the rooms downstairs and then ventured upstairs. However, they found neither treasure nor ghosts. Their curiosity led them to hear a noise. Tom abruptly exclaimed, What's that? Ghosts? Whispering? Huck replied, There were holes in the floor, and through them, the boys could see into the rooms downstairs. Tom continued, No, Huck, it's two men. One is the old Spaniard who came to live in the village last week. I don't know the other man. Let's listen to them. The two men sat on the floor, the Spaniard wearing a green hat with long white hair, and the other man was small and dark. One of the men produced a bag and began to open it. As they spoke, the Spaniard complained, It's hard in here and proceeded to remove his green hat and long white hair. Tom and Huck, observing from their vantage point upstairs, whispered to each other, That's Joe. The men continued talking. The second man mentioned, We took $650 when we robbed that house, taking some money. Out of the bag, he suggested, we can take fifty dollars with us now. What are we going to do with the six hundred dollars? Joe replied, leave it here. We can come back and get it next week. Give me the bag. Joe walked across the room to the fireplace, moved two large stones from the floor, and began to dig with his knife. Upstairs, the two boys watched in excitement, envisioning the discovery of treasure, specifically six hundred dollars. However, Joe suddenly stopped digging and exclaimed, Hello, what's this? He had uncovered an old box. The men retrieved the box and opened it, finding money inside. Joe's friend commented, It's money. Joe reached into the box discovering thousands of dollars. The two men looked at the money. With delight, but Joe's friend began to inquire about its origins. Joe firmly stated, don't ask. It's our money now. We can't take it with us today. What can we do with it? Put it back under the floor. The next Saturday was Becky Thatcher's birthday and all of Becky's friends were very excited about it. Becky told Tom that it was going to be a wonderful day. They were planning a picnic by the river, and after that, they would visit MacDougall's cave.